Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wolfer Programming. Today I want to talk about a new device and a new operating system that I've been playing with lately. A little bit of um, background. My PinePhone Pro, the SIM card tray, is broken. And I talked to uh, Pine64 support, and they recommended that they send me the part and I take it to a local repair shop. So I got the part in, and I took it to the local repair shop, and um, I got it back with a broken screen, and they said they couldn't fix the uh, <laughs> they couldn't fix the SIM card. So clearly, I needed another phone to play with, and uh, there is a Black Friday sale going on right now with the Pixel phones. And I've heard a lot of people talk about Graphene OS, Graphene OS. Everyone is saying, "You want a degoogled phone? Get Graphene OS." Well. The Pixel phone is the only like really supported phone. Um, I think you can compile it yourself if you know how to do that. Um, so I wanted to buy one on the supported list, and the Pixel A was on sale for three hundred dollars, and I thought that was a pretty good deal. So here we are. Um, so it's not running, you know, the kind of Linux that we'd all like to, for it to run, but it is Android, and Android is Linux. And um, you know, the phone is pretty nice. Um, for three hundred dollars, it's a great deal. The first thing I did was delete it. With the 6A, you kind of have to do some weird things. Like when you go to the OEM um, unlocking section, you actually have to first update the operating system, then factory reset it, and then you can then enable OEM unlocking. Graphene OS offers an amazing web installer. I thought it was so cool. The web browser seems to have, be able to communicate with the phone and flash it and do everything and it did several different several different stages of flashing all by itself so like back in the day when you wanted to flash a ROM you had to pull up your Android development tools ADB flash this partition and that partition and you should probably still know how to do that if you're running a custom wrong ROM because <laughs> to get it back you might have to do that but their web installer makes things stupid easy so I'll try to put some screenshots of the web installer in this video while I'm talking so once you get it installed, um, you know, it's interestingly, this thing came with Android 12, I believe. And once I put Graphene OS, it updated to Android 13. I thought that was really funny that Google would have an older OS than the custom ROM, ROM folks. So let's go ahead and stop it up, start, start it up. Um, and uh, the fingerprint reader uh, works pretty good. I haven't had many problems with it. Um, the thing about Graphene OS is it, it has a couple security features that make it great for privacy-oriented people. The, uh, there's, the main feature, I think, is separate profiles. So you can actually have separate users on your phone the same way you would on any desktop computer with Windows or Linux. Even OS X, I think, supports multiple users. Uh, with Graphene OS, I, the, uh, they use separate encryption keys on the different users, so they can't see each other's stuff. Like, you have to um, offer the other user the permission to make phone calls, and then it can access the phone logs, otherwise it can't. And so, you can make a separate profile just for, like, your spyware apps, just to make sure that they aren't seeing you. But a lot of people are just recommending um, installing Google Play through their compatibility layer on the main profile and everything is sandboxed. So every app is sandboxed. You tell it what permissions, like if it can access the network, if it cannot. And for me, this is really useful because I use, um, occasionally I use languages other than English and the keyboard. And those just aren't available to me in the uh, the base um, Lineage OS, you know, ROMs like Slashy or Lineage OS. So really cool stuff. Um, <laughs> I, I can actually use a Google keyboard, disable network after it downloads a language, and then, you know, it's pretty safe to use. I don't think it's phone, you know, there's no, no way it should be phoning home to Google. And if you're really worried about it, about it phoning home to Google, you can always open them all up in another profile. So your main profile can just be your basic phone calls and texts, and then your separate profile can have, like, applications that are highly likely to be spying on you, um, like WeChat here, which is, you know has ties to a foreign government, but very useful app if you have, um, you know, any friends or family in mainline China, China, for example. Um, one of the things that you might not like it, uh, like about it is the 
the fault theme is kind of gray um, <laughs> with everything. And I'll show you that in the fresh profile. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what switching profiles is like. And um, see here I've, you know, for the video, I've made a user two and I can just switch the user two. It's gonna ask me for a password. Let's see, it's a little, it's where the settings stay open. Okay, so you see here we've got um, a pretty basic, um, but a, you know, very basic color palette. It's graphene gray, so uh, so everything is is kind of gray. And so far, I've been pretty happy with it. I've been testing it for 24 hours. I've gotten everything to work. I did have some trouble with getting Mint Mobile to work. I bought a whole year's worth of Mint Mobile at $15 a month, so I'm kind of stuck with it. Um, that's a good deal too. So, you know, $300 plus $180 for a year of service, you're like talking under $500 for a brand new phone that lasts at least a year. So I think this is a great, uh, this is a really great phone. If you're looking for something um, in the $300 price range, three to $500, um, there's still a lot of work on Pine phones and Linux phones before those are there yet. And another thing I don't like about Pine phones is there's no cases. So here's a pretty cheap case, $10 for the Pixel and it's super tough, you know, it's it's gonna really keep it from breaking. And you get, you know, you get everything, you know, the whole Android ecosystem. And, you know, that's just one way of of uh, providing you the um, the privacy. So a Linux operating system, you know, when, you know, when you have privacy and security, all of those things kind of get mixed around a lot. And that's because, well, in order to be, to have privacy, you really need security. And Graphene OS really focuses on security <clears throat> much more than like just freedom to install whatever you want. So like with PinePhone OS, it's straight Linux, right? So you just install binaries and and those binaries really have full access to your uh, full access to your system, and that maybe is not as secure as you want because with this you can, when you have a binary, you can actually tell it do you, whether it's allowed to have a network, uh, you know, access to the network, access to the hard drive, access, you know, because Android is kind of built with those kind of APIs um, for high security, and so that that gives you a little more trust that you're not being spied on. So I do think right now, if you're looking for a de-Google life, but you still need some Google services like occasionally, um, Graphene OS is probably the best there is right now of all the operating systems. I've tried Lineage OS, I've tried Slashy, and um, yeah, Graphene is just the most usable experience. I mean, it's it's a pretty stock Android. You can use everything like you know your new pipe and all the all the apps that you love about Android, all the freedom about Android, and. And there's no phoning home to Google. Everything is wrapped up in a compatibility layer. A lot of people like Apple for their security, but they're really, they're only blocking Apple and Google from tracking you. Apple still tracks you. Apple still stores all that data. Apple is not your friend. Apple wants to know everything about you. With Graphene OS, everything is open source. It's a nonprofit organization. And um, it does a really good job. So drawbacks about this phone, things that I don't like too much about this phone. Um, it doesn't have a headphone jack. It doesn't have an SD card slot and that's annoying. So it does have a, a nice USB port, USB-C port, and I have some USB-C headphones and they work okay. But some of my older phones, the connection on the USB-C input starts to kind of wear out over time. And when it, it doesn't like degrade the audio, what it does, it just completely disconnects. And so I find it hard to finish a workout or anything. So it would be nice if they had a headphone jack, but you know, this is we don't really have a whole lot of choices of, of phones right now. So as far as Graphene OS, uh, Pixel is the only phone that they support. And the 6A is the cheapest right now. It's on sale for $300. It'll probably go back up to $450 in a couple weeks. So if you're watching this kind of late, you know, I still think it's probably a good deal at for $450. If you can catch it cheaper, it's great. If you can get it used, it's great. Do that. You can probably replace the battery. It's a, it's a pretty common phone, so the parts are going to be widely accessible. So what do you guys think? Do you think Graphene OS is a good compromise for uh, security or do you think everyone should really be focusing on getting the next Linux distro on the phones? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. If you want to keep 
Be kept up to date with open source and mobile tech news and have a great day.